Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I've got a roundup for you. Um, as we're approaching the end of the year, I have a couple of different roundups as I'm sure everyone else. Um, just kind of reassessing the year and how it went, what I learned from certain challenges, yada yada yada. Um, so today I wanted to talk about the hashtag 2018 make nine. Um, I participated in that this year and put that out um, back in January and I've completed eight of my nine. Um, the ninth pattern I would really like to make again, I really like to make at some point, but I think I just kind of missed my window. Uh, it is Vogue, can't remember, but I'm gonna pop a picture of it up right here. Um, if you watch Kittenish Behavior, which I'm sure many of you do, Sean um, on there has made this dress a ton, and which is the reason I wanna make it. Uh, the deep pockets on it, I think, would be very flattering on my figure um, to give me a little extra width on my hips where I need it to kind of balance my figure out a little better. Um, but I think it needs to be made up, I, or I would like to make it up in like a uh, cotton lawn. Um, and I, I just think that needs to be more spring or even summer, something that you could layer into fall. It's just now that we're into actual winter, I don't see me making it. You could make it out of a wool crepe. But anyway, it's not gonna get made before the end of 2018. <laughs> so I think I am gonna put it on my make nine for next year. But I was, everything else got made up and so I would just kinda like to go through the patterns and um, kind of what I learned and that kind of thing. So I'm going to pop up a, I'm gonna cover my face with a picture of my 2018 make nine. So you will see, number one, I had the orange lingerie Marlboro bra. I have such a hard time saying that word. Um, and I did get one that actually fits made up um, of that pattern. That took a few iterations, but I got there and got that one made up. The second pattern you see there is the um, By Hand in London Romana coat. And that was also a Sew My Style um, pattern, and that got made up. And you've seen that actually quite a few times. Very pleased with that one. The third pattern on there is the Closet Case Patterns Sophie Swimsuit. And that also got made up this year. And I actually, I have plans to make more. I just never got around to it this summer. So that's definitely on my to-do list for next summer. Actually, maybe even before then, we're going to um, see my parents in Florida. They go down to Florida um, for the winter and we're gonna go visit them um, sometime um, this winter. So I think I will make myself a new swimsuit for that. Um, the next pattern, I'm trying to remember this off the top of my head, is the Carolyn Pajamas. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not looking at a picture of what you're seeing. Uh, the Carolyn Pajamas, and I did make a PJ set, um, a shorts, the short sleeved in shorts PJ set. Uh, the next one is the Sasha Trousers, and I just got those made up. Um, those are in my current mini capsule wardrobe. And then we have the lander pants, and those actually got made earlier in the year in a corduroy, and also, there were also a Sew My Style pattern uh, for July, and I made those in the shorts. Um, so I made those twice this year. Then we've got the Sutton Blouse by True Bias. Um, the lander pants were also by True Bias. Um, the Sutton Top by True Bias, that got made up in the earlier of the year, and I've still got, I've got that one. And then Helen's Closet Blackwood Cardigan, which turned out to be a favorite pattern um, after I made that one up the first time. And then the Vogue pattern, which did not get made up. So that was my 2018 Make 9. So let's talk about each pattern individually. And some of these I'll model, model for you. Not all of them, though. I'm not putting on a bathing suit or a bra to post on YouTube. So <laughs> everything else I will model for you. Okay, so pattern one was the orange lingerie Marlboro bra. Here is my iteration. You can see that there is underwire poking out of the top. Um, I'm not really sure what happened there. The other side fits in perfectly, just the way it's supposed to. I don't know, I clearly sewed something wrong. But this bra does fit perfectly. Now, I am not crazy about the colors on this bra. I don't, I don't like pink and black together. I think it's too harsh of a contrast. Um, I know that plenty of people do and that's fine. It's just not my favorite. Um, but this was, I was just playing around and trying to get a good fit on this bra. Um, and this one does fit me. Clearly it's not wearable because I'm being stabbed to death by this underwire and I can't get it fixed. So I will probably um, harvest this one for parts and make myself a new one. <laughs> But yes, this pattern does fit. Um, and again, it took many iterations. But yeah, you'll see more of these because I love a good underwire bra. So yay for the Marlboro. 
Okay, pattern two is the Romana coat. Um, and again, you have seen this one so many times. Um, I'm actually gonna put a picture of me twirling around in it from my coat um, roundup, and I will actually pop a card in there for my top five coat patterns as well. Made it out of a gray wool. It turned out exactly how I had hoped. I used this wonderful printed um, jacquard rayon for the lining, nice and slippery. Um, there is a great sew along that goes along with this. It was also so my style pattern for February. I'm so glad I made this one. I thought it was gonna be too dressy, but no, it, this ended up being just perfect. And I actually may make this again in a lighter weight because um, one of the listed fabrics is uh, linen. And I think that this would actually be fabulous in a linen for like a dramatic coat for the spring. Um, or even like a seersucker or a striped linen. I don't know. I, it could almost be like trench coat territory, I feel like, uh, for the spring. So I think that this might get made up again in 2019. But I love this. I love this coat pattern. And again, you've seen it on me a million times. I love the pockets on it. I think they balance my hips out well um, for my figure. And I, I just really, it nips in at the waist to give shape. I really, really love that coat pattern. Okay, next up is the Sophie bathing suit. And again, I will not be modeling this for you, but it is an underwire style, um, one piece. I did line the center panel with a uh, power mesh that gives kind of a sucked in tummy effect, which is phenomenal, especially for those of us that have had babies and, and twins at that. <laughs> um, I love this pattern. It actually, this fits me fantastic in the cups. I shortened the torso because I am short-waisted and I shortened it too much. So it has a tendency to pull down a lot when I'm wearing it. Um, so I just need to go back in and lengthen that in the front piece. I need to lengthen it in the center front to nothing at the side because actually it fits me really well in the back. So, um, I mean, it's still wearable and I've actually worn it a ton. In fact, it's got a very strong chlorine smell to it right now. But I actually have some Liberty London um, swimsuit fabric that I bought after Christmas last year with some Christmas money. And I would like to make this swimsuit in that. So um, I will probably try and get that done for um, when we go visit my parents in Florida at some point this winter. So yay. I'm really glad I tried that one out. It, there, it Again, I love a one piece on me, but I'm very short-waisted and busty, and it is impossible for me to find swimsuits that fit both my top and my bottom half, because again, I'm very narrow in the hips, and so things just look baggy and ridiculous on my lower half versus, you know, to get it to fit on my top half. So being able to sew has totally revolutionized the swimsuits that I can wear, and I, again, I love my body style in a one piece, and I'm so glad those are coming back in style. Um, so anyway, that one has been, yes, I, yeah, that one needs to be made up actually quite a few colorways um, or different fabric fabrics because uh, we have a neighborhood pool. And so I spend a lot of time there. My kids are old enough to go to the, I mean, I don't ooh, have to do much with my kids at the pool, but I do need to be there. Um, I, I'm not wanting them to go down there by themselves yet. So, and I actually sit in the shade the whole time. I'm very fair. I don't sit in the sun at all anymore. But it's just nice to be able to have a swimsuit on if I want to get in the water and cool off. Okay, next pattern is the Closet Case Carolyn Pajamas. I made these in a Liberty, and I'm actually going to try these on for you, a Liberty of London uh, Tonalon that I got on a really fantastic sale. It's called the Isle of Wight, and I guess these are little landmarks from the Isle of Wight. I've never been there. Love to go. But I just love the colors, the purples and the blues. Um, I did not a piped... Uh, finish, but I did like a flat bias tape kind of finish uh, around the collar and around the outside and along the sleeves and some chambray that I had in my stash. I love these. They're so cute. So the short sleeves and the shorts, and you're seeing me in them right now, the bottoms have pockets. They're just so classic and wonderful. Now I will say I have found I don't like sleeping in pajamas. I love sleeping in a nightgown, but I don't like sleeping in like button down pajamas. I just feel too constricted. I like having my arms free. So like a sleeveless top and shorts is fine or a sleeveless nightgown um, 
Because I actually, I like to have my arms bare too when I'm sleeping because I that way I can regulate my body temperature easily. Um, I actually tend to go more cold, but it's not, when I'm sleeping and stuff, it's just nice to be able to regulate by pulling arms out and stuff like that. But these are super nice. So I don't know that I will make these again for pajamas. However, I have made a long sleeve top to wear as an actual blouse for my closet case um, mini capsule and it's phenomenal and you guys will see that next week. But um these are fantastic for any time you're traveling with family members. So when we go on vacations and we like for uh, this past summer, we went to Colorado. So it was my sister's family, my family and my parents. And we rented a house. So we were all staying in the same house. Situations like that, these are fantastic. When you're walking around and you don't want to be like indecent with your family members. <laughs> um, not that my nightgowns are indecent, but still, you know, it's just like there's a lot more skin showing that needs to be to like be walking around in. So I do really love these as almost loungewear, um, but that's great for that kind of a situation. Okay, next up are the Closet Case Sasha Trousers. I um, talked about these in my vlogmas. I just made these up and I will talk about them more in my lookbook. These pants are phenomenal. I am so mad at myself that it took me so long. I literally had the fabric, all of the notions, pocket lining, everything, all ready to go for these when I went on my sewing retreat last January. And they just, um, I didn't have time to make them. And so they just sat in a bucket ready to be cut out and it just never, never happened. So I finally, with this little mini capsule, I wanted to get this done for my Make 9 um, and also thought it was perfect for this capsule. These pants are, these are the most comfortable trousers I've ever had. Now they do have a lot of stretch in them. There's 20% stretch in these, but they're so comfortable. They fit me great in the waist. There's no cutting in. Um, they're still a skinny pant. There may be a couple of alterations that I make, uh, mostly to the crotch. I find I have, um, I, I think it's the way my legs are set in my hips, but I, my hips, my legs are set like in a little bit more, like not as wide out on the outside. Uh, where the anyway, um, I find though that on the inside, and I think it's because maybe my legs are closer together, I have to shave off um, a little bit of the inseam, both in the front and the back, um, from the crotch into the inseam, because too much fabric will pool there, and then it just looks weird, like in my crotch. So um, these aren't too bad, but I think I will maybe trim like a quarter of an inch off uh, the front and the back at that inseam going from the crotch you know down to nothing but I love these and I did the whole bells and whistles on these and I actually may make another pair of these maybe not before the end of the year we're running out of time but I had some leftover velveteen that um, jacquard polka dot velveteen that I made my blazer out of um, for the sew frosting and I think I have enough to make a very pared down version of these so another version is you know there aren't the pockets there aren't the belt loops and there's no welt pockets in the back but um it's still like a cigarette pant, and I may make the full-length version of that because that'd be cool to wear with the jacket that I made as kind of a suit, um, but also just to have just for any kind of night out or whatever, just kind of a fancy pair of pants, and there's enough stretch in that that these would work. So, highly recommend the Sasha trousers. They're kind of the unsung hero of the sewing room world. I don't know why more people aren't talking about those. They're amazing. Okay, next up are the True Bias Lander Pants. I made this corduroy version up and you're gonna see me in them right now um they don't fit me great anymore uh so annoying they fit me fine in the waist actually they were way too tight in the waist when I first made them um back last winter at the beginning of the year um they fit me fine now in the waist but I find they're too baggy in the butt and like I said before my butt deflated and so it's a crotch curve issue which you cannot go back and alter because I need more fabric <laughs> added into the crotch curve so um it's unfortunate. This was um, some corduroy that was gifted to me, though, by a sewing friend that had had it in her stash for, like, 30 years, I think, and just gave it to me. And I actually got this pair of pants, and I got, like, a jean jacket, like a work jacket, kind of, out of it with a Sherpa collar and stuff in it, um, out of this corduroy. But I would like another pair. But I think I need to mess around with the fit, because I also made these in the shorts, and uh, I gave those away, because they... Number one, they were linen, which I would love another pair of linen ones, but they were too big. Again, they would really give me droopy butt at the end of the day because linen grows really bad, especially with body heat. Um, and they just weren't staying up and I could have altered the waist, but again, the butt of them was what was really just not looking good. So I actually gifted those um, away. 
Um, but those were also a sew my style um, for July. So I don't have those any longer, but you'll see me in these. Uh, and I do, I love this, this pant. And I think I also maybe need to do the same thing with the inner thigh with this pattern as well. So to do some more tweaking. Okay, up next, uh, also from True Bias, is the Sutton Top. I made this at the very beginning. Um, actually, I made quite a few of these, like right after the first of the year when I um, made my pledge here. But this is the Sutton Blouse. And um, I just pressed it, but it's kind of doing something wonky. This is a fun little top. I, it may be a little too boxy for my figure. I'll put it on for you guys to tell me what you think. I made it in a Cupro that I got from Blackbird Fabrics again after Christmas last year. And um, I, it was my first time working with Cupro and I fell in love with it because it's like silk but not. So it is, Cupro is cotton that has gone through the same processing that rayon goes through. And so um, it feels very similar to a rayon but it's kind of got a washed silk feeling to it as well. It's just very lovely. If you've never sewn with it, I suggest trying it at some point. I mean, it's slinky and slippery like a rayon or a silk would be, um, but it's just lovely to wear. So there is that one. And then my last one that I actually made are my Blackwood cardigans. Now I made this camel colored one that you've seen a million times first. And um, someone who made a comment, I can't remember which video now, um, about if I had added width to the bands because this seemed to close a little bit more. And I have not. But I wanted to show the difference. So this fabric, this camel fabric is very stretchy. It is a sweater knit and it is very, very stretchy. And I feel like it closes much better than this rib knit that I used. Um, both of these are from Blackbird Fabrics uh, from last, like again, right after Christmas last year. This one does not have as much stretch. In fact, it's pretty tight in my arms but it does not close nearly as much as the other one and they are the same pattern same size nothing is different other than the fabrication on these so i just kind of wanted to show a difference in the blackwood and how it can be uh slouchier if you use a stretchier knit versus if you use a more stable knit how it doesn't it definitely has more of an open um, appearance so those are the eight uh patterns that i made for the hashtag 2018 make nine <laughs> and again i didn't get to my vogue pattern but i am putting that on my 2019 or my 2019 yes my 2019 make nine um for next year because i do want to get that one made up it's a little more intensive and so i just need to and it's a fabric hog it takes a ton of fabric like five yards even for someone short like me and i want to make the midi length i really want to make the midi length so um i'm gonna have to put that into my budget <laughs> to get some um, cotton lawn that will um, fit with that dress. But anyway, that wraps up my um, review of my 2018 Make 9, hashtag 2018 Make 9. Um, I hope you found that interesting. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget, forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Again, I'm planning all of my content for next year and so this really helps me out. Um, but until next time, happy sewing. Bye.